I don't know about you, but my green thumb is actually more of a solid brown. Um, I can't get anything to grow. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, try as I might, I just can't seem to, to make anything come out of the ground. I, I once had one of those Venus fly traps where you plant the seed and, and you water it and you set it in the sunlight and, and you had to rotate it and keep it in it like kind of not direct sunlight, whatever that is. And, and the instructions told me to, to do this and water this thing for six months uh, before I even saw anything come out of the ground. So that's exactly what I did. I, I watered a patch of dirt on my windowsill in a cup for six months. Actually, uh, I was more dedicated to it than just six months. I actually watered it, I think like seven or eight months uh, before I realized nothing was coming out of this dirt. Nothing. I, I watered dirt for six, seven, eight months and all I had to show of for it was still a cup of dirt. Now, my wife, on the other hand, is a backyard farmer. She starts the entire garden from seed. Uh, we don't have to purchase any flowers. We don't have to get any vegetables, anything. Everything that's growing in my yard has been started as a seed. She starts over 300 seeds. That's, at least that's what we did last year, 300 plants. Uh, in our living room window, actually right around February, we start these seeds, they take up my front window, the dresser in front of the window, and they're growing for months. And then finally they get uh, transported to the greenhouse in the backyard where uh, they they're finish off their early life. And then around, uh, they're going to get watered, they're going to get split apart and replanted and 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 made into this big greenhouse of, of plants. And then around late May, early June is when they actually go in the ground. And they go all over the yard, <coughs> in the ground, in the, in the vegetable garden. Now this week, we're starting a journey in the book of Mark. That, that's going to actually take us the next four episodes. Uh, each week we're going to take a, a look at this parable, and, and this is actually the first recorded parable in the book of Mark that Jesus teaches. He tells it to a crowd, and then once the disciples and him are by themselves, he, he explains this parable. So why don't you and I, why don't we start with reading the parable? It's found in Mark chapter 4, verse 3. We're going to pick it up. He says, listen. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns and grew up and, and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. Still other seed fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as they had planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now, each week we're going to take a look at one of the seeds mentioned here in the book of Mark in this parable. So for some more context, take a look at the entire passage found in Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. But for our time together, for each episode, we're going to focus on one seed at a time. We see four, and Jesus uses these parables or stories. They convey a deeper meaning of our spiritual journey. He uses them to communicate some deep stuff about the kingdom of heaven or, or our spiritual journeys as they relate to the real world or, or life in general. But parables is just a story that illustrates a spiritual truth. That's it. It's a simple storytelling structure that Jesus is using. And honestly, I, I love it because we can relate to it. Now, because in a story like this, we're going to see a lot. But through this parable, I think you'll find that it breaks down into, honestly, seasons of our life. So as we take each seed at a time, I want to remind you of, of a few things. One, God is the sower. And we are the soil. But, but unlike me, God's green thumb is, is dialed into perfection. He understands what he's doing. He, and, and, and our life is just a planting ground that God plants truth and reveals his character in. 
His job is to cultivate new growth in our lives. That's what his plan entails, to plant something new. But your heart soil, now that's going to determine if the seed's going to take root or not. So let's jump into seed one. So today we're going to begin to really unpack this first real big parable that we find in Mark chapter 4, where Jesus is describing a farmer who goes out and scatters some seed as he's trying to plant his crops. And I think the first thing that we need to understand that is with a parable, a parable is a, is a story to try to commute, uh, communicate a, a heavenly truth and an earthly reality. And so Jesus is telling this parable about a farmer and, and it is, we appreciate the fact that Jesus comes along after the first few verses of telling the parable Jesus comes along and he explains it. <laughs> he doesn't always explain all of his parables, so it's good to start with one where he actually goes and he explains. And, and so today I want to talk kind of about that first seed that the, that the farmer throws out. And so I want to look specifically at a couple of verses. The first one, in verse 4, he says, As he scattered it across the field, some of the seeds fell on the footpath, and birds came and ate it. Now, I don't know if uh, you've ever gardened. I don't know if you've ever tried to plant anything. You and I normally don't just grab a bunch of seeds and just kind of throw them out willy-nilly. We're probably very intentional about where we're going to put those seeds. But in this scenario, in this story, as the farmer's going, he isn't really given a whole lot of thought to where he's throwing the feed, seeds. He just wants to get as many seeds out there. So first of all, that really describes our Heavenly Father. God is doing everything he can to get his seed, his good news, his, his gospel out to everyone. He just wants to go, you know, so God so loved the world. And so he is just, here is the good news and he's sprinkling it all over the earth. He's sprinkling it in every person's life. He's doing everything he can to get that truth as far out there, as much out there as humanly possible. But the reality is, as we know from farming or gardening or planting, is that sometimes those seeds end up in soil that's just not going to take root. And so this very first one uh, that Jesus describes, he tells us later on down in verse 15 what he's describing here. So he says, the seeds that fell on the footpath represented those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Wow. So now we have an understanding. We, we have a description about what this means. So just as seeds fall upon rock or it falls upon a hard soil and it's not going to take any root, it's just going to sit there and the birds are going to go, yes, yeah, lunchtime or the chipmunks or the squirrels or somebody's going to come and it's going to eat it up. And so Jesus tells us what what is represented in this very first seed is when the truth of God goes upon someone's heart and it doesn't take root. He says Satan comes and he snatches it away. Now there's a couple of things that we should understand, first of all, that we're not just talking about a physical reality here, we're talking about really our heart conditions. So every one of these soils represent the soil of our heart, if we can just kind of use that imagery to describe where our heart is at. And sometimes our heart is just closed off to God. We're just not interested, we're, we're angry, we're whatever, right? For whatever reason, we, we don't believe in it, we think science has debunked it, I, I don't know what the reasoning is. But we have hardened our heart to that. We have this, this footpath in our, in our heart. And so when that, that seed comes, the truth of Jesus comes at our heart, we're just like, nah, I don't want it. I'm not interested. I don't care. I don't believe in it. But it is also interesting that Jesus tells us in this moment that Satan is like those birds. He's eating up that seed. Think that is an important thing for you and I to understand that we're really in this spiritual battle. We're in this spiritual war. And Satan wants to do everything he can to cloud our mind, to blind our eyes, as other scriptures say, or in this one, harden our hearts, just to keep us from embracing that truth. Maybe you know somebody who's in that situation right now. No matter how many times you've tried to tell them about the love of Jesus, no matter how many times you've 
tried to tell them the truth of God, they're just like, I don't want to hear it. I cannot believe in a loving God with all of this ugliness in the world or whatever their reasoning is. They, they just can't receive it. Well, I want to give you a little bit of good news. When we are describing, or Jesus is telling this parable, he's not just telling about a person's entire life. He's really talking about a person's seasons. Every one of us have had seasons in our life where our hearts are hardened to the truth of God, where we are the rock path that, that we're just like, no, I don't want it. But the great thing about seasons is they change. Seasons can change. And so that person that you're trying to love, that person that you're trying to help come to a truth about Jesus and embrace that truth, just because their hearts are rocky and, and the footpath says, no, I'm not going to embrace it right now in their life, doesn't mean it has to be forever. Doesn't mean it's for their entire life. Now, for me, I've had seasons in my life where I'm just like, I don't want to hear it. I'm just, I'm just not in a place I want to receive it. And I think God's okay with that. I love how he puts it in the book of Ecclesiastes where he says there is a time for everything. There is a season for everything. And sometimes our seasons are filled with rejecting the truth of God. And that's okay. Because God's going to continue to throw out those seeds. And as life changes and as our hearts change and the soil of our heart changes, pretty soon I'm going to be a different heart soil because that seed's going to continue to be thrown out there by our God because no matter how hard our heart is to God, our God will never give up on us. His love is too great and he's never going to stop. I think this can lead us to a lot of discussion tonight and so I'm going to hand it off to Ryan and have him help you wrestle through how does this impact our lives today and the people around us. So this verse or these verses where it talks about the seed getting uh, thrown out onto the footpath and the birds taking it away and it seems so hopeless like what are you gonna do if you're that seed what if what are you gonna do if your heart is that rocky path but one thing I love about um, these verses and Todd talked about it is that this may just represent a season in your life that this isn't the entirety of your life that sometimes in our own lives, we make up different types of seeds and our heart is different types of soil. And there are times in our life where we just feel kind of hopeless. Like, what's the point? Where are we going from here? But the reality is that there's always times of hope. There's always an opportunity uh, to turn a new page in your story. And so, as you are thinking about these verses and, and you're unpacking these maybe with people around you or uh, in a small group of people, ask yourselves, ask each other, when have I felt hopeless? What were those seasons like in my life? And what was happening in my life and what might be the reason I felt so hopeless in that time? But then I wanna encourage you to think about what pulled you out of that? Where did God meet you? And maybe you've never even recognized it ever up until this point. But acknowledge and recognize that there was something pivotal that happened in your life. That God intervened and pulled you out of that hopelessness. So think about those things. Talk about those things with people around you and the people that you spend time with. And know that there's always hope. There's always a new chapter that's yet to be written.